The Haunted Story of the Moffat Family Haunted by Demonic Prince of Hell In the quiet town of Rancho Cucamonga, Southern California, a dark presence lingered around the Moffat family estate, haunting and tormenting the family for over six years. From the moment they set foot in their ancestral mansion, dark forces and unspeakable horrors began to plague their lives. The Moffats were tormented by a malevolent force, which eventually revealed itself as the Demonic Prince of Hell. Chilling cries in the dead of night and inexplicable shadows that danced in the moonlight plagued the family's ancestral home, casting a pall of fear over all who dared to tread near. The Moffats even invited priests and exorcists, who all ran away in defeat due to the entity's immense dark power. But where did this entity come from? And what really transpired in the Moffat family estate? Brace yourself for a bone-chilling story about the paranormal experiences that occurred to the Moffat family between 1987 and 1992, where the true nature of evil revealed itself in all its ghastly glory. And without further ado, let's get started. The Unleashing. In the mid-1980s, a seemingly innocuous decision by a family caretaker to perform an ancient healing ritual on an ailing family member, unwittingly acted as the catalyst for a nightmarish series of events for the Moffat family. This decision marked the beginning of an ordeal that would span over six years, involving a malicious presence that claimed to be a prince of hell itself. The family's grandmother, due to her deteriorating health, required constant care, a situation that led to the hiring of a caretaker. This caretaker, a woman deeply rooted in her cultural and spiritual practices, resorted to a ritual from Santeria, a faith she believed held the power to heal. Santeria, a syncretic religion born from the fusion of African Yoruba and Roman Catholic beliefs, often involves rituals and offerings to connect with the spiritual realm for guidance and healing. However, the complexities of these practices and the powers they invoke are often not fully understood by outsiders. And in this instance, the ritual went beyond a mere appeal for healing. The immediate aftermath of the ritual did not yield the hoped-for recovery. Instead, the grandmother's health continued to decline until her eventual passing. It was a sorrowful outcome that might have been accepted as the natural conclusion to a battle with illness were it not for the series of unfathomable and terrifying events that soon began to unfold within the Moffat household. It became increasingly clear that what was initially intended as a healing gesture had instead opened the door to something dark and malevolent. This entity, which made its presence known to the Moffat family, was unlike any typical ghost or gentle spirit often reported in paranormal stories. It was much more sinister, identifying itself as a prince among the demonic hierarchies of hell. Its actions within the household reflected this title, as it went on to haunt and torment the family with a relentless intensity that seemed to go beyond mere mischief. But how did the manifestation start? early manifestations. Now, the Moffat family's encounter with the supernatural began with incidents so subtle and seemingly benign that they might have been brushed off as forgetfulness or practical jokes. It started with rearranged sports memorabilia and household items, the kind of occurrences that, on their own, could easily be explained away by mundane reasons. Yet these were a mere soft introduction to a series of events that rapidly evolved beyond the boundaries of the natural world. Bill Moffat, a passionate collector of sports memorabilia, especially cherished his collection of baseball bobbleheads. It was his pride and joy, meticulously arranged in a dedicated room, a room that was kept locked, with Bill having the only key to the room. So you can imagine the mix of confusion and disbelief that the family had when they discovered the entire collection had been moved. It was not just moved, it was arranged on the floor in the shape of a triangle. Initially, these manifestations seemed almost playful, if not entirely benign. Objects were moved, but not damaged. However, the nature of these manifestations began to change, growing increasingly ominous. Bizarre symbols started to appear throughout the Moffat home drawn E, on walls in what looked like charcoal and chalk. These symbols were unfamiliar to the family, consisting of intricate designs that included triangles with elongated tails, imbuing them with a sense of foreboding and otherworldliness. What might have initially been dismissed as an odd series of coincidences now took on a more sinister aspect. As the manifestations escalated, 
the Moffat family found themselves grappling with the reality of their situation. The playful rearrangement of objects had evolved into a display of power and control, a demonstration that whatever was with them was capable of more than just moving inanimate objects. The symbols, with their unknown meanings and origins, seemed to be a message, a form of communication from an entity that was no longer content to merely observe intensifying hauntings. Physical attacks on the family members marked a terrifying new phase of the haunting. The entity began to exert a violent physical presence. These attacks ranged from inexplicable bruises and scratches appearing on the bodies of family members to more direct and frightening assaults that left them in no doubt of the mean will driving these actions. Compounding this atmosphere of terror were the mysterious appearances of knives throughout the house, positioned in ways that seemed designed to threaten or cause harm. Knives would be found embedded in walls, placed under pillows, or positioned upright under chairs, creating a minefield of lethal hazards in the most familiar and intimate spaces of their home. Perhaps the most chilling aspect of this intensifying haunting was the writing of threatening messages. These communications from the entity moved beyond the mere manifestation of symbols to direct, intelligible threats written on mirrors and walls. These messages served not only to terrify, but also to isolate the family further, making it clear that the entity was aware of their attempts to understand and combat it. Now driven to the brink by an escalating series of terrifying and unexplained events in their home, the Moffat family embarked on a desperate quest for answers and relief. Seeking help, you see, the increasingly hostile and dangerous manifestations of the entity haunting them left them with no choice but to seek help from outside their immediate circle. The Moffats first turned to their faith, seeking the aid of religious figures who they hoped would have the power to banish the malevolent presence from their home. Priests were called upon to bless the house. However, despite these efforts, the ceremonies and blessings provided only temporary respite, if any at all. The entity, undeterred by these spiritual interventions, continued its campaign of terror against the family and those who came near, seemingly immune to the rites performed to cast it out. In their search for more specialized assistance, the Moffats reached out to paranormal experts and investigators, including Lloyd Auerbach and Christopher Chacon. These individuals conducted investigations, collected evidence, and attempted to communicate with the entity. But despite their expertise and the sophisticated nature of their methods, they too found themselves unable to provide the Moffat family with a lasting solution. Perhaps the most well-known figures the Moffats consulted were Ed and Lorraine Warren, renowned for their investigations into supernatural phenomena. The Warrens had faced down many purportedly demonic entities in the past and had a reputation for being able to deal with the most severe hauntings. Yet, even with their extensive experience and knowledge, the Warrens were unable to liberate the Moffat family from their unseen tormentor. The persistence and power of the entity haunting the Moffat seemed to surpass anything the Warrens had encountered before, leaving them as stumped as everyone else who had tried to help. But then, the Moffat family's ordeal took a pivotal turn when the entity haunting them finally offered a form of communication that hinted at its desires and origins, a pact with Prince. Prince claimed that it had the right to one of the family members, based on a promise it alleged had been made generations before. At the heart of this terrifying situation was Deborah Moffat, whose courage and determination to protect her family led her to do what few would dare. She engaged directly with the entity in an effort to negotiate peace. The entity's interactions had escalated from mysterious and unsettling to outright hostile and dangerous, pushing Deborah to the point where dialogue with the entity appeared as the only viable path forward. Prince's claim that a family member had been promised to it was a notion that seemed ripped from the pages of a dark fairy tale. Yet for Deborah and her family, it was a terrifying reality they were forced to confront. Throughout these exchanges, Deborah sought to assert her own terms, aiming to protect her family without succumbing to the entity's demands. Deborah then negotiated a pact with Prince, though the terms of this uneasy peace were dictated by the complex dynamics of power and desperation. However, the negotiations led to a temporary cessation of hostilities. Prince agreed to limit the interactions, focusing the attention solely on Deborah while sparing the rest of her family from further harm. This agreement, while far from a perfect solution, allowed the Moffats a reprieve from the constant terror that had dominated their lives. 
However, the uneasy truce that Deborah Moffat managed to negotiate with the entity did little to improve the pervasive atmosphere of fear that had enveloped her family. While the most overt acts of violence and terror may have stopped, the presence of the entity remained an oppressive force in their lives. The entity had not only invaded their physical space, but had insidiously worked its way into every aspect of their lives, eroding relationships and creating an impossible barrier between the Moffats and the outside world. The entity's departure. Now, the end of the Moffat family's haunting came as abruptly as it began. This is with the evil entity known as Prince, ceasing its torment without warning or explanation. After six years of living under the shadow of an oppressive and unseen presence, the family awoke to a silence that was both unfamiliar and profound. The sudden departure of Prince marked the end of a chapter in their lives that had been defined by fear, uncertainty, and the constant threat of violence. However, the psychological scars left by the years of haunting were deep, affecting each member of the family in profound ways. Deborah Moffat, who had been at the forefront of the family's efforts to communicate with and appease the entity, found solace and purpose in writing about their experiences. Her decision to document the haunting was driven by a desire to process her own trauma, but also by a hope that her account could serve as a guide or warning to others who try to explore or play with rituals that they are not aware of. And that brings us to the end of the unnerving story of the Moffat family's encounter with the unknown. What are your thoughts on this haunting tale? Can you imagine enduring such an ordeal? Share your thoughts on this chilling story in the comments below. And if you like such stories, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more intriguing tales like this one.